Hello, everyone out there in Internet Radio Land. This is Bobcat. And I'm Burke. Burkean. Whatever. Maybe we should start over. No. That's a terrible oh, idea. Oh, 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 great. It's, it's, our first, it's our first podcast, and already we sound unprofessional. Oh, wait, we are unprofessional. Anyways, moving on. Uh, hello, everyone out there in Internet Radio Land. And this is the uh, first episode of the Five Point Podcast. Why do you sound like you're reading what? from a script? Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm just that unnatural, okay? I noticed. So anyways, at the Five Point Podcast, um, our, our, our idea is we're going to watch things that we have not seen personally and don't really know anything about. At least at To first. try and get as uh, authentic and personal a reaction to it as possible. And then we spend however long it takes to blather on about it so that you at home can know what we think, so that you can know what to think. Think, think, think. The blather shall be blathery. Indeed. So, uh, five points, just to run it, run through it. Um, to give our review some structure, we're going to go through these points in this order. First impression. When we saw the DVD or the description on Netflix, what did we think? Two. Story. What's the story about? How does it work? What's going on? Three. Characters. Who are the main characters? What's the cast like? What do we think of them? Four. Presentation. Presentation is everything from direction to animation to voice acting to music. Anything that we think is noteworthy. And then, finally, we do our final thoughts, which is our overall opinion of it and whether we would recommend it. Also final. Yes, final, final, final. And so for our first episode, we've selected to do the anime Baka and Test. Now, speaking of finals, this is a show about... Uh, well, let me just pull up the Netflix description in preparation for uh, our first impression. While he does that, I'll explain it as best I can. It is card games at school without the card game. Yes, it, this is very much like if someone watched Yu-Gi-Oh! and said, you know, this would be great if there wasn't that whole card game thing getting in the way of the protagonists and their hologram battles. Also, common sense and any kind of rule system. Yes. first It's like first season Yu-Gi-Oh! with less balance. And Netflix isn't working right now. <laughs> so uh, I'll try it on my end. So... Oh, wait, I still have it open on my end. Well, that's lucky. <coughs> so read, read Netflix's description. I shall. At Fumazaki Academy, students who use summoned beings to do battle against their classmates. I think I read that wrong. Oh, well. While Class A is the best, the kids in lowly Class F are the worst on campus. And they're about to find themselves facing the school's top talent. <laughs> Okay, so with that description, first impression, I was expecting this to be terrible. Uh, I I wrote a note down for my first impression. Crap. Pure, utter crap. Yes. The the issue with it, it looked like it has a very sort of moe art style, uh. and the word breast is in the t um, title of episode 9. I, I was expecting it... Go ahead. Sorry. I was expecting it to just be fan service nonsense. I was expecting it, all the humor to be, LOL, her boobs jiggled. <laughs> uh, uh, more on that later, for the record. Um, yes. I did... Sorry, again. No, I no, did... Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to, have to work on timing, Darth. Anyways, uh, the art style, as I'm currently looking at it, because why not? Anyways, art style. Well, I, because I, it's part four. Yes. It's... I don't know. It. Well, A, it had a bunch of chibi. 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 Chibi Tiny. things. Tiny. Super deformed. SD. Kind of. Anyways. It had a bunch of super deformed characters. As well as three very, very generic, though I would not know how generic until later, characters on it and by, by on it he means the cover 
Yes, the cover. It's on the Netflix. And it's just very generic looking. It doesn't look inspired in the slightest. No. Um, for, for a show that looks... The art style looks a lot like K-On! or Haruhi Suzumiya. Only a little less defined. Yes. So that's that was our first impression. We were expecting to hate this. We were expecting this to be something we could riff on. We were expecting nothing good. So that's part one. Two. What's the story's premise? Well, we already talked about this a little bit. Now, the thing is, when the, when it said summoned beings on the description, I was picturing some sort of magic or something. Like, students summon demons to beat each other up. I was expecting but, half-baked science. Well, well, your expectation was reached. There's half-baked science. I don't think it's half-baked, but yes, there, there's something resembling science. There are lines. Yes. Right. Well, our main character's name is Yoshi. Now, of course, every, every character has a first and last name. This isn't that basic a show, but we're not going to bother with that. In fact, Burke here has insisted on not remembering anyone's name. I don't even remember what you just said two minutes ago. Moving on, our main character is Yoshi. Um, he goes to the... what's the name of that again? Uh, Fumizuki Academy, which... Uh, you, you, you've heard... you know the law, No Child Left Behind? <laughs> The Fumizuki Academy does not believe in that nonsense. They test all students on the same test, and you are placed in different classrooms, class A through class F, and the quality of the stuff in your classroom depends on how good you are. Class A? Class A is, uh, it looks like a round host club, only more decked out and luxurious. You probably get free blowjobs. Or at least discounted. Probably. But, so yeah, it's it's like a European castle of the modern era. Or it looks like the sort of place that rap stars buy before they go bankrupt. So what, two minutes after they go gold? No, no, no. I'm sorry, three. <laughs> Anyways. Right. right. Uh, if I may introduce how we are introduced to the story itself with the first episode. We begin with an introduction to the main character. Who is generic McBlandy? Though I will be, I will be fair. He gets a personality. He stands out. He yeah, really, the, he really the, does. The first minute is not good to him. What no. happens is he's in the middle of taking his placement test, well, and he's he, he's very confident he's going to do well. While well, generic, uh, pink-haired anime girl is furiously masturbating until she passes out. Now, of course, that's just how it looks like. We'll, we'll talk about this about this a bit more under art style, but... And this is just something I've noticed with anime over the years. Anime sucks at telling the difference between character has a fever and character is aroused. The blush is exactly the same. Uh, now, pink hair is named Mizuki. Um, despite being... I would say that she's the female lead. She isn't actually all that important. No. She... she She's the one that you look at and you know, okay, unless this series goes in a very different direction, that's who the main guy is going to wind up with. Yes. And apparently this school is so unfair that if you are sick on the day of the test, you get a zero. Because health is a part of the test. We're not making that up. The teacher actually says that. Twice. Yes. Well, two different teachers say it. Right. Now, Yoshi, as you might imagine, being a, being an idiot, gets put into class F. Well, we haven't mentioned that his defining characteristic is Homer Simpson. Yeah, yeah so he, he's the thin Japanese teenage Homer Simpson. That's why he stands out. He's, right, he's, so, he's a moron. Yes. Although we need to keep going because, remember, we're just talking about the plot here. Right. We'll get more into the characters in a bit. <laughs> so Yoshi gets put into class F despite, quote, How could I do so bad? I answered one-tenth of the questions. <laughs> uh, 
Probably. Now, we mentioned yeah. that Class A looked awesome and wonderful. A palace. Class F looks like a third world nation's kindergarten classroom. And, and I know. I've been to schools in Honduras. The school in Honduras had a nicer classroom than Class F. Stop bragging. Not bragging. I'm just pointing out how pathetic this thing is. That's called bragging. Somewhere. It would be bragging if I was in Class A talking about it. Or even Class E. You are in Class E. Well, yes, I am very classy. Moving on. That, so he gets there. I will rape your children for that. So anyways, so Yoshi gets there. We're introduced to the rest of his classmates. We'll get into them more in our third section, character. And Mizuki shows up, and he is, of course, he's very protective of her. When she fainted in the middle of the test from her illness, um, he rushed over and um, to keep her from hitting the ground. And he wants to use the school's, one of the school's absurd, or not absurd, actually it is kind of absurd, obscure rules is the word I was really looking for, to try and steal Class E's stuff. For her benefit. Yes. This is also orchestrated by Yuji, who is the class president. And so what happens is, we're, the first episode introduces us to the premise of the show, or the, the show's method of fighting. Lower, any class can, cha can challenge another class. The students summon avatars, who are holograms, who, whose strength is based on how well they did on their last tests. And their strength is assessed based on different uh, subjects. So, like, if I got a 60 out of 100 in English and an 80 out of 100 in math, obviously, if I could, I would want to be using my math score to power up my avatar. Of course, this is... This is what I, I am retarded! This can backfire horribly! Right. Because, of course, you don't always get to choose what your subject is. The, the rules of the game are, e either in, in a group fight or a one-on-one -on -one fight, there have been both, what members of the class fight each other. Th there is no strategy here. It is strictly on a strength-for-strength -strength basis. Your little avatar fights their little avatar. Stronger little avatar wins. Now, Class F seems to be screwed because... Everyone in Class E, who they challenged right off the bat, well, just by dint of their scores, is better than them. Except and then, and then we learned that Mizuki is one of the smartest kids in the school. She was just sick that day. Indeed, or was furiously masturbating. The issue is still unclear. So now I can never t give my parents this this blog link. Thanks, thanks, Burke. You're welcome. Uh, so anyway. I figure if I mention it enough, you can't cut it out. <laughs> well, that's too much work. So anyways, so Mizuki... Okay, you know what? We need to go to the three rules. So the, so the rules so far. So Avatar with the higher grade wins. Now, there is some strategy in the group fights because if you have three people with a score of 25 and they attack one person with a 70... You're going to lose two of your people with 25, but the last one's going to make it. So there, there are some group tactics in the larger fight. And we learned that Yoshi has a superpower, which is actually like kryptonite, only worse. <laughs> because when, when Superman isn't around kryptonite, he's, he's super strong. But Yoshi's avatar's powers are active all the time, and they do him absolutely no good. They are you see, Yoshi is so stupid that he's what they call a probationary student. And as a result, because probationary students have to spend extra time helping teachers clean classrooms, his avatar can lift things. <laughs> uh, it defeats itself by tripping on a table. Yes. And unfortunately for Yoshi... Probationary avatars also transmit any pain they feel back to their user. This is a bit like Superman's power being the ability to have um, have bones made of glass. Just whenever he wants. He can be extra vulnerable. Yes. Fortunately for... Th and the, 
what keeps a class from challenging another class willy-nilly is one, any student who has dropped to zero life points has to go take a remedial class with the scariest teacher in the school. And by that we mean the scariest teacher in the school shows up out of nowhere and drags them off. Often tied. Often tied. Yes. Tied up, that is. Uh, now, if you are dropped to low life points, you can go over to a nearby classroom and take a test that they give you and replenish your life points that way. Mizuki saves the day in the first episode by going into that classroom and taking... She must have taken, like, a hundred tests in that little time period. And so she had a higher aggregate score than the entirety of Class E put together. Basically. And she, does not of... she does not belong there. And most of Class A as well, for the record. Right, though we don't find that out later. <laughs> or until later. So... So the day is saved because our useless hero managed to distract them long enough. Now that was one thing that was kind of funny was that well, the, cl the class E is closing in the last members of class F as the fight has gone horribly wrong for them. And Yoshi busts out his avatar and they say, "Gasp! He has a probationary avatar." Hey, this is a bit like This is a bit like villains being afraid of of glass-boned Superman. Maybe they were worried that they'd be made fun of for beating up on somebody who was so stupid. Awesome. I don't know. So anyways, so the plot of the show, as far as we've seen, is Class E, or Class F, Class F's goal, Yoshi doing this for Mizuki, and Yuji, Class President, just doing it because he wants to, is trying to take Class A's stuff. Or at least get better stuff. Though, at the end of it, Yuji completely and totally screws that over. Deciding not to take the tests and stuff from Class yes. C because C has an ulterior motive. Yes, he's he he's decided that if he's not going to catch a fish, he's not going to catch a big fish. I don't think you said that correctly. No, I did. So because Class A challenges them, but we're not going to get into it beyond that because we've said enough to establish the show, or at least the plot of the show. It's an episodic show. Very comedic, or, or at least mostly comedic. Sometimes it's, l it's less funny than it thinks it is. Odd amount of continuity, though. Yes, yeah, so th and that's one thing that, while, while I would compare this to, while I would compare Yoshi to Homer Simpson, this is not The Simpsons. We do not have rubber band reality. Things are building on each other. It's crash course-like, yes, but they are building. <laughs> so, now that we've talked about Yoshi, let's transition over to... Characters. Hooray! So we've talked about Yoshi. He's Yoshi's a... my... Go ahead. He's a moron. He's my favorite. Uh, I... Actually, my favorite is the random, stalkery gay person. I'll let you figure out which one, though. There, yeah, there's more than one. We'll talk about that a bit more in Final Thoughts, but... It's kind of hilarious. There's kind of a lot of them. Um... So we've we talked about Yoshi. He's stupid, but and he also what what adds to the Homer Simpson comparison is that he's also food obsessed, but not in the way you'd think. <laughs> he's not a glutton. He's just dead poor. It doesn't help that a girl we have not yet mentioned, but I will introduce, and pink-haired girl, whatever the crap her M name was, Mizuki. I don't even understand what you just said. Pink-haired girl. Both want to do him bad, even though the one girl keeps breaking his limbs. Yeah, it's that kind of serious. Everyone loves Yoshi. The weird thing is, they are totally cool with going on double dates with him. Or, wait, what would the proper terms be for that when there's only one guy? Polygamous dates? I, I don't know. They, they both go out with him at the same time. Harem it's, dates! So... Yoshi is obsessed with food because he is slowly starving to death. A typical lunch for him is, or a, t a typical day's rations for him is, he'll take a cup of noodle pack and cut it in half. There's lunch, there's dinner. Uh, and another, another episode, mmm, salt water for lunch, and for dessert, sugar water. <laughs> in one memorable joke, actually, he 
figures out the way to make an infinite amount of noodles. Every time he goes to have a meal, he cuts the block in half, leaving the other block for later. Leaving him with an unlimited amount of noodles and turning him into a genius? If only in his own mind. Yes. Now, we've talked about Mizuki. She's... If you've ever seen an anime, she's the nice girl. She's the one that it's obvious that it's obviously he's going to wind up with. She isn't threatening. She's cute. She has a terrible voice. Yeah, that, that's a matter of opinion, but yeah. it's a voice that is very overused, cutesy. Although that does help some of the jokes. There, there, there are some of the jokes that that in the series that would not work without the voice cast they have. Yeah. I'll agree to that. So, Banana so next up, and your donut. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in a second. So you have... So, Mizuki, first pink-haired girl. The trouble with calling her pink-haired girl is that Minami, the one who keeps breaking Yoshi's arms, also has pink hair. Uh, I think it's more maroon. Myself. Maybe purple. Anyways, her name isn't Ma- whatever... Minami. Whatever, whatever he just said. Whatever, whatever. Her name is Elseworlds Asuka, because, well... Yeah, she was raised in Germany, and she's kind of a bitch. Also, seriously, she's just... This anime is art-style version of Asuka, only a little bit more affectionate, which means she's also a little bit more violent. Yes. Down to, down to the odd thing that she gets bad test scores only because she can't read Japanese. Right. She does excellent in math, because... Aside from word problems, she's good to go there, but... Yeah, so Elseworld Asuka. So next we should talk about Yuji. Yuji is as close as we got in this Moe Fest to a manly man. Which one was he? The class president. Oh. He, I'm, I'm looking at the cast page right now, which has a picture of him with the rest of his class, minus <laughs> Yoshi. And he is literally head and shoulders taller than they are. I personally think, and this is supported later on by a very telling test score, he just failed a lot and has been held back. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. I mean, if, you wonder why his parents keep sending him to the private academy that, where the tuition has to cover the cost of all those hologram projectors if he keeps <laughs> failing, but... Uh, that can be activated at any time. As long as there's a teacher there, they can activate it. Doesn't matter if it's Saturday. <laughs> so he's an interesting character. The bromance between him and main character generic moron Yoshi. No, is well. Remember that joke I mentioned earlier, sort of in passing. He right. is the banana to main character generic moron's donut. As yes, said by pink haired girl. Yes. They well, which she says in such a cute little voice when and the art style switches to this shoujo yaoi type thing. <laughs> yes, apparently the people in the other classes are obsessed with those two as a couple. Which uh, just goes to show that Japanese high school is just like the internet. Oh, well, let's face it, it's also like real high school. Only it's less of a problem. I never remember in high school anyone obsessing over two guys being gay for each other, but... That's because you went to high school in the 70s. Everyone was gay for each other. 70s? Yeah. Oh, Burke, you wound me. Speaking of gender confusion... See see that that (laughs) transition right there? Uh, You (laughs) suck and I hate you. (laughs) You have Hideyoshi, who is also likable, but you feel sorry for him. Her. See... The thing about Hideyoshi is that he is voiced by a girl, and this isn't this isn't like Goku, where they just let the same voice actress keep doing it long past where it was logical in Japan. Now, in the American dub, he is voiced by a girl. He insists he's a guy, but he is the regarded as the prettiest one in the cast. To the point where two of our main characters, the uh, the generic moron main character and a pervert main character we will get to in a moment who actually doesn't have that much of a character. No, he'll be very quick to get through. Anyways, um, in fact, I just about described him. (laughs) Anyways, they both just... If they see him in a skirt, which he wears fairly often, 
for some reason. Not by his own choice. Sometimes by his own choice. Um, if they see him in a skirt, they will just start bleeding out the nose everywhere. Yes. Because they are both madly in lust with him. Yes. And not helping matters is the fact that he has a twin identical sister, which really doesn't help his whole, no, really, I'm a guy, case. Who also sounds manlier than him, despite <laughs> sharing the same voice actress. <laughs> yes. Next up is Kota. No, excuse me. Next up is Yuko, who is the pervert we mentioned. And the, now we've only watched the first three episodes because we have a life. Our, our, we, well, we, might, we may go back and review the rest of it later, but we figure that whether we're reviewing a movie or a show, we're going to watch just about the same amount of it. Pretty much. Which means that while this has been pretty spoiler heavy so far, we can't in fact spoil the whole series. Because we haven't seen it. Yes. Anyways, so if if Yuko goes off and does... Wait a minute. Anything? Dang it, his name is Kota. Oh. Okay. This is why I didn't bother learning it. It just makes me look <laughs> stupid if I do. Yeah. So anyways, Kota, he's the, he's the pervert. He's obsessed with photography, as far as we can tell. And he also has a bit of Nabikian from Ron One Half in him, in that he spends a lot of time taking photos and then selling the prints at school. And by photos, I mean pictures of main cast members in compromising situations. Usually men in dresses. Yes. In fact, entirely men in dresses. We've yet to see him otherwise. Yeah. Kind of odd. And the last character we'll mention by name is Shoko, who is... who Burke will, t will call Weird Stalker Girl. Oh, yes. I didn't know we were bringing her up, actually. <laughs> eh, should I figure... Show, she's in the picture here on Wikipedia. That must mean she's important. Well, she uh, did rape that one character off screen, presumably. Yeah. Shoko is. Class hmm, maybe rep. Maybe we shouldn't talk. Yeah, she's the class rep of Class A. And she is obsessed with Yuji. The by obsessed other with, class rep. Yes, the class rep of Class F. And they've apparently known each other since they were little. Now, in most series, I've known you since you were little means we're going to have the cute, relatively harmless romance compared to everyone else. <laughs> Dead buffalo. Yes, she keeps shocking him, then dragging him to the movies. By, by shocking him, I mean with she owns a taser. Well, we don't know if she legally owns one, but she has one. Yes. It is used multiple times. And she keeps dragging him... Him, I am retarded yet again. She keeps dragging him to the movies, specifically Apocalypse Now Redux, and it was a bull that was slaughtered, not a buffalo, because I am, as always, retarded. Yes, he... What Burke is referring to is the scene in the movie he kept waking up during. She, then she kept shocking him, and he always woke up in the same exact scene. Because she kept taking him to see it. Yes. And he also just does not seem to like spending time with her. At all. Like many men. Yes. Now, two minor characters we'll bring up. One, um, just shows... The world loves Yoshi. Minami <laughs> likes Yoshi. Mizuki likes Yoshi. And Yoshi also has a gay stalker. Although... Oh. Eh, actually, I guess calling... Uh, he, okay, Minami has a lesbian stalker. She is outright insane. She sees her giving any attention to Yoshi, and she tries to use violence upon him. Psycho-lesbian is the term. Yeah, so, woohoo, Japan. What, what way, to, way to break those stereotypes. Progression. Yes. We don't have it. Yes. Oh, well, we now, kind of hand, do with the other character. Yeah. Although, one thing I'll point out, everyone loves Yoshi. This is not a will-they-or-won't-they they series. <laughs> so it gets points for that. No, everyone is very open about who they like. Um, aside from gay character. Now, him I like because it's understated. He is, he is shy around Yoshi. He also looks manlier than Yoshi. So we have yet another banana for his donut. Uh, yes. 
Um, I wonder if he's jealous of the main character's best friend who's the normal banana for his donut. I don't know. It, it hasn't come up in the first three episodes. But just for the, but this is this scene was one of the best in the show. Yoshi is starving to death, as you may recall, from malnutrition. He's running to school, and he runs into the gay guy, who, again, we're not going to bother looking up his name. It's met, it's probably said once. I don't. The think whole it thing. Was. I assume it was said once. No, he signed his letter anonymously. Hmm, that's a good point. Anyway, um, he Yoshi runs right into him. Now, he'd had a piece of toast in his mouth, and it fell to the ground. The gay guy. Yoshi. Yoshi looks down at it. Are you going to eat that? Gay character. Doesn't that seem a little dirty to you? Yoshi. Oh, I don't care. You cut to the gay character's internal monologue. I see. He doesn't care because it's been in my mouth. No amount of filth could contaminate it. Cut back to Yoshi's mo- Yoshi's internal monologue. Thirty second rule is still in effect. I didn't see that, Ant. <laughs> yes. That's so, also a line. Yes. So that's so that's why gay, gay character is definitely better than psycho, psycho lesbian. lesbian. Yes, the psycho lesbian who I did not expect to see, or you, know, excuse me, you did not expect to see her more than once. No. And I kind of wished she would go away when she was around. Well, she was involved with the first breaking of main character generic moron's limbs. It's just, I thought that would be it. That, you know, one-off joke. No! She's actually the antagonist of the third episode. Yep. So, that, that's all the important characters. Some shows get villains like Darkseid. This show has Psycho Lesbian. Some characters get get villains like Darkseid, Captain I Janeway, the Doctor. Oh, we're not starting that. Okay, fine. Anyway, so so that's our what take a, on the characters. They're they're kind of. They're kind of overall uh, a collection of cliches, especially Kota, the pervert photographer. He's barely a character. Yes. He barely has any lines. He barely does anything except take pi- take pictures. He but the rest of them are sort, sort of the cliche, but they have enough of a twist on them to make things interesting. I will agree with this. So the show gets a so the show the show gets some praise there. Which now, brings us to presentation, where we start having to take some knocks off. <laughs> well, now to start with the positive first. If I may, um, go ahead. The backgrounds, at least at the beginning, um. They're actually fairly stylish. They look like they came straight from the manga, which is very interesting, considering there wasn't one. No, and there, uh, and I also did do the research. Apparently there is no video game based on this show. <laughs> Despite it being perfect for this show. Uh, yes. The show is a video game. Anyways, yes. the the backgrounds, they have this these dotted, well, dots all around. Uh, maybe Ben... If you've Maybe. ever seen, go ahead. If, if if you've ever seen a comic book from the '80s, the way they colored them, or '80s and before, where what they had was you'd have a whole bunch of spots of color in the, like you wouldn't have a solid red, you'd have a whole bunch of little red spots in there. That that's what the backgrounds look like a lot of the time. More or less, yeah. It's very stylized. I have to assume that it at least in the first two episodes, was done on purpose. Third episode, anything's up for anything's up for grabs because the second episode kind of ate the budget. But we'll right. get to that. Yes. So the so backgrounds you they don't want you looking at the backgrounds anyway. And there's a lot of repeated animation. Well one thing I've noticed about anime like this is that some shows repeat animation in that, say, 
if in Episode 3 a character gets up from a sitting position, they'll repeat that in Episode 5. They'll try to hide it. They'll try to be subtle. Not here. No, but this is major. This is majorly a sin, again, with Episode 3. Yes. We're not fond of Episode 3. If Episode 3 had been like the whole... The rest of the show had been like Episode 3... Would we would be, be much more negative than we are right now. And yes, I do get more negative. So, so now as for the character designs, the animation is repeated, but it's pretty good. Nothing really special. It's more fluid than not half the time yeah. when it doesn't go insane. And there's one scene in episode two where they really blew the budget. <laughs> uh, I'm convinced that episode three had issues because of that one scene in episode two. It was basically this big, gloriously drawn, animated, flawless... Okay, it wasn't flawless, but it was much, much better than anything else in the rest of the show. Right. It was. It was, it was like... It was like watching an anime about Final Fantasy where they'd given it a good budget. Yes, but only in like two minutes at most. At most. And, yeah, it ate the budget. Because here's the thing. In episode three, episode one and two, the animation's always moving. It's always constant. Episode three, at certain points, the animation just stops. Yeah. One or two things might move, like a character's eyes or their lips, but only just. The animation right, it, dies. It kind of gets into 90s anime level. Now, speaking of Final Fantasy, the music in this show. Now, how did you I, describe the theme song? Generic as all hell. Yes. No, I liked it, but it's definitely nothing special. This is every anime theme song you've ever heard from a show like this. You could transplant right. them. It makes no difference. Yep. So, Which, again, I, not a bad pop song. I'd actually consider... If I felt like blowing a dollar, I'd go on iTunes and see if they had it. I will admit, though, I'd love to see the Death Note theme song over this opening. <laughs> That'd be kind of hilarious. Yes. Or vice versa. Yes. Okay, so... But but I didn't really want to mention the theme song much. And the ending theme is also kind of generic. But I don't I, like it as much as the opening. I didn't even... I don't even remember it. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the problem I'm having, too. I remember it happening. I remember that there was some nice animation during it. There was, there, there was music at the end. That yes. is a thing. I know, because scenes happened after the music ended. Yes. But um, where I think the show is actually better is in the background music in the show. Specifically one example. You know, I don't usually notice background music unless it's, say, Fist of the North Star. I don't even notice it then. But during the, during the uh, Avatar fight scenes the background music switches to something that sounds like a Final Fantasy fight song. So that's a good that's a good uh, little musical illusion right there. Yeah. It, gets, it gets more points for that. And most of the super deformed... Oh! I... Okay, we're retarded for not bringing this up, but those super deformed characters I mentioned before, those are the avatars. Those are the video game characters. The yes. main characters create. Yes. And they fight each other like it's an RPG, sort of. <laughs> it's it's like you. I, I guess this is a good place for presentation because the fight scenes are stylish. They are. Um, the game, however, like this is sort of like a writing <laughs> level type thing. <laughs> uh, I suppose the reason there isn't a video game version of this is that. You could not make a good video game out of this. Like, a, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! as a card game is very simple. You have attack voice, attack voiced, attack points, defense points, special summons, um, 
magic, and traps. So you have enough elements there to keep things strategic. You can't just all you can't always just say summon three black blue eyes white dragons in the same turn, even if you have money to screw st with which to screw the rules. The screw the, the, look, there are no rules to screw. It's entirely right. just di dictated by what the writer wants. Yes, the writer wants character X to win. Character X is going to win, and actually. It, it's like Yu-Gi-Oh! if the only stat was attack. Yeah. There's no defending, there's no... There's no strategy. The only, Which I guess makes sense, because this is the school of hard knocks. Or, no, school of hard knocks is the street. This is the school of pointless dickery. That they, they want the students to succeed as much as possible. Ergo... The the only way to have a good uh, st chance at winning is to have a good score on your last test. Yes. Now sometimes they try to increase the uh, the challenge or the mystery of who's going to win by keeping a character's attack points in question marks, which you wonder why in the game one person would reveal their attack points and the other person's wouldn't have yet. The answer is to create false tension. Pretty much. Um, so yeah, that's that's the entirety of it. Now, the avatars, they're kind of cute. They're, they're the sort of thing you'd expect from an, a Japanese, one of those free Japanese MMORPGs that you see advertised on websites. I want to eat them. Well, that's because you hate cute things. And they are very, very, very cute. They are disgusting. So, uh, while we're on the topic of visuals, is, um, one weird thing I noticed is that on a few occasions... I don't know what they were trying to do here. The female characters' heads would stay the same size, but their bodies would seem to inflate and deflate. At first I thought they were trying for fan service, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't jiggles. They knew how to do jiggles properly. Yes, the pink-haired girl does jiggle every now and again. But it's not distracting. Hey, well, there's one scene where they just pointlessly focus on her chest. And it... Okay, you're, you're right, you're right. I forgot, I, I had blocked that out. But more on that in a moment, for the yes. record. But it's like her bo it's like their bodies were just expanding contracting. It's like their bodies were bagpipes and someone was playing them. <laughs> and and, and I, I the closest I can figure out to a point to it, well, first point would be to have some sort of something visual going on that was very cheap to do. But I think what they were trying to do was show the characters breathing hard, at which point they failed. Yeah, I never even considered that. Oh, uh, as for the fan service thing, I will admit, I have to give points to this thing, because while they hint at panty shots and the like, they never actually show anything. And yep. And compared to an anime like Rosario plus Vampire, just the anime, the manga's a different story, which I'm sure we'll get to sooner or later. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. I... Anyways, that building rage now inside of me, this thing does not overdo the fan service. It does not thrust it in your face until it loses all meaning. There is fan service. And they actually managed to make jokes out of it. Yes. Like, the one character who's worn the most revealing outfits, consistently, and the only one to have shown up without a shirt in any fashion, is the he-she from the main character cast. Hideyoshi. Whatever. His name is unimportant. Yes, all what's important that he, is that... All I know is that he has a vagina. <laughs> they, 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 for one scene, they made him basically be the booth babe for their show. Like, And, and this was at school. This was not at some off-campus event. No, the teachers were perfectly fine with them forcing the male student to dress up in mini skirts and tube tops for them to take pictures of to ogle over between rounds of the fight. His maleness is still in question. <laughs> he insists he's male. I don't know what the story is there. Let's see here. What else was... Okay, so we mentioned earlier that the voice acting was a big part of why the show worked. And this will lead into humor, for the record. Yes. We do not, we do not recommend watching this show subtitled. If you speak if you speak Japanese, you'll probably get some of the jokes better, but a lot of the humor works because the characters' inflections. 
Yes. Like, Half the jokes would fail if it wasn't for the voice actors. If it was just in text. It's, like, it's kind of like, to be honest, a lot of the jokes of The Simpsons wouldn't work without the excellent voice cast behind them. Yes. Like, if you got... Well, it's not just the if it is in text or not. It's just if you got lesser quality voice actors, it wouldn't work. The, the, the big example that occurs to me is, remember pink-haired girl, Mizuki, described Yoshi and Yuji, class president, as, as Yuji is the banana to your donut. Now, that's a, that line is kind of silly, but what makes it great is she has this cutesy little girl voice, and she just sounds so innocent while saying it. Like, that was just a normal fact of life, t- telling somebody that, oh yeah, people think you and your best friend are gay. Yeah. That is a thing. So Which... we don't... We definitely, if you have the chance to watch it in dub or sub, definitely choose dub. Unless it, you're hearing impaired, in which case we're just insensitive jerks. Also, how the crap are you listening? Yes, I, I think we can be. I think we can safely mock the deaf audience. Oh, you can. I want to keep a fan base, and if our fan base is deaf, then a that explains a lot. Well, and that, B, that, that makes life a lot easier for us. Uh, we'll just start playing other podcasts. Who's to know? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Music, uh, special events here. Um, humor. Humor, to yes. save Ben, Dark, Bobcat from flailing around. Humor. Sp- one thing I like in particular is how this show is aware of itself, but not to the point where it's obnoxious. Like, one really well-done joke, I think, anyways, is the narrator is also this is also the scary teacher we alluded to earlier. He's sort of a character. He show, he's more of a plot device. Right, and he, he's funny. I wish there was more of him, honestly. Yes, um, but he's off to the side. He just does narrator stuff and all that. However, the main characters do have a teacher of Class F who is the most bland, boring character ever. Intentionally so. This this isn't this isn't a we tried to have a relatable character and messed up. Yeah, is it this is definitely intentional. Again, the voice acting's fairly good. In episode three, which despite it being terrible, actually has a few good jokes, including some we mentioned earlier. Um the the little right 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 the terrible teacher, the mean teacher, the plot device teacher, shows up in the classroom and declares that he is now going to be their teacher, and their old teacher, Blandy McBoring, is now the narrator. And lo and behold, <laughs> later on, he is indeed the narrator. Yes, one one of the characters just decided he wanted a, di- a different role. It's it's honestly really well done. Yep. So. That, that's that's pretty much all all of part four presentation. The the show has its fum, has places where it fumbles. It's obviously was made on a budget. <laughs> or if they if they had a good budget, they squandered it. Considering yeah. it's only thirteen episodes, I'm not surprised. Actually, there is a second season. It just isn't on Netflix yet. Uh-huh. But it's time for us to go to final thoughts. If so we're going to release you now from our prattle. Yes. So, so Burke, what did you think of this show overall? Well, as I mentioned before, my opening first impressions were pure and utter crap, and I'll be honest, this isn't a show I'd normally watch. It was a chore for me to watch the first three episodes. But it was honestly not a bad show. It's fairly average. It has hints of being better than average. But it also has these little flaws that keep dragging it back down to average. Right. I, it, it, this is not a show where everything got a C. It was just kind of eh there. This is yeah. a show where it felt like for everything that was great and wonderful, and I wish I'd thought of that, there was something equally and opposite. Oh, God, really? You're doing that? Yeah, and I'll admit, I'm probably going to, at the very least, watch the last two episodes of what I've just now been learned is season one. Thanks for learning me that, Ben. Dark. I, lear- I done learned you good. I am really 
retarded and terrible. You were saying? Oh, yeah, anyway. You're going to go back and watch the last two episodes of the first season. Yes. Because, honestly, I'm kind of curious how they end it. I'm curious where the characters go. These aren't bad characters. It's not a bad story. It's not one I sit down and watch voluntarily, but, you know, whatever. And yep, if, it... if you're bored, why not? If you have Netflix, go ahead, watch it. Yep. Or Hulu. Um, it might be on Hulu. Possibly. Now, I enjoyed it. Um, I, my, my first impression, like I said, was a lot like Burke's. I was expecting this to be utterly terrible. I was expecting this to be the sort of thing that makes people look down on anime fans. Like Rosario plus Vampire. Yes. And it was not. What was this was what actually was pretty funny. I, I enjoyed the main character, even because he, he was the right sort of, uh, blend of uh, generic and stupid to be distinct. As bizarre as that may sound. Yes, he he left an impression on me. Characters in these types of show, in this type of moe-ish show, usually don't leave a lot of impression on me. Like psychic guy from Haruhi Suzumiya. He left no impression on me. Now we're in an area I have no expertise in. I'm sorry, Burke. So, anyways, speaking of, Har- speaking of Harui Suzumiya, if you enjoyed Harui Suzumiya, go watch this show. This is much more focused on the comedy end of things, but I would say that they're kind of similar. If you liked Azumanga Daio, um, watch this show, because, or at least give it a shot, because while this is a lot more etchy, it does sort of feel... It feels like a co-ed version of that at times with some of the talking about nothing and the weird art styles and the, and the humor. Um, now, would I suggest you rush out and buy it on DVD? <laughs> uh, uh. So, so, yes, Burke, Burke agrees with me. This is not something that, unless you watch it and it is just, to you, the greatest thing ever. Now, you don't need to own this. You should just, uh, fortunately, Netflix seems to have a great deal of Funimation right now because you can get most of their shows on there. So just Netflix it. Either get the DVD or um, just stream it. It's it's at least worthwhile, at least now you, because, you know, it's, I, it's, as far as I can tell, it isn't super famous. Although my friends who are big anime fans knew what I was talking about when I mentioned it, so maybe I'm just out of the loop. Wait, you're not an anime fan? Well, I am, but I mean people who are more devoted than I am. Crap, what does that make me? An Ultraman fanboy who can pretend occasionally. But anyways, um, so overall we give this, a, we, we do recommend this. We're going to go back and watch it, or at least I'm going to go back and watch it at some point. We may review the series as a whole later if there's popular demand for it and we've gotten a few more episodes under our belts. Or, well... Really, let's be fair here, if we have demand for it. Well, okay, I'm going to go watch it on my own personal time at some point. <laughs> whether or not we review it will depend on whether people want us to give a final thought on the first season. It'd be nice of you to. Yes. Okay. And... Go ahead. Well, actually, I think we're pretty much done with our first podcast. Uh, so about there. Now yep. we're done. <laughs> so, uh, for anyone who's been who's made it this far... Thank you very much. We know this is our first effort. Um, what the hell is wrong with you? Exactly. Um, if you have any questions, comments, critiques, requests for future reviews, uh, you can email us at Darth Bobcat. As w- that's all one word. Darth Bobcat at gmail dot com. Um, and there's something I know I'm forgetting. I do not oh, have yes. the emails. My emails are not in existence. Yes. And if you have any, um, if you have any requests for reviews, we'll review just about anything as long as we haven't heard about it. Um, we, I, I had this in the blog on the site, but um, our our current format is we'll review anything that's a movie, uh, a a uh, or a, an anime, a TV show, uh, or even a comic book, as long as one. We can somehow watch it for free online, like, say, through Netflix, or... Or other more devious means that I obtain. Yes, though, we prefer to not resort to piracy to do reviews. And Some of us. Yes. But, um, so, any as long as we haven't really, as long as we don't have an opinion going in. 
like we would not review Nevon Genesis Evangelion because even though I haven't ever bothered to watch more than five episodes, I have a distinct opinion of it because I've watched reviews of it and of the episodes I have seen. And I have a distinct opinion of it because I have seen it all. However, this may change in the future. We're still not certain. Right. And on that note, um, again, that email address is darthbobcat at gmail.com. And thanks, everyone, for coming in and giving a listen. Be sure to click the ads of our sponsors. You all can go to hell. Uh, oh, Bert. One, uh, no, they, no, they, they're, if they're still listening to this, <laughs> something is wrong with them. Anyways, <laughs> uh, one last thing. Our next project may be, unless for some bizarre reason we start getting emails, Heat Gap, oh, God, I got the gay people on my mind from episode three. He's Guy J. <laughs> yep. Because I think that looks interesting, and it'd be a nice contrast to what we just witnessed. Yes, we definitely need to get some more manly in our systems. Well, one of us does. And on that happy note, good night, everyone. Wait, is that a gay joke? Possibly.